Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, let's talk about BERT. So I'm assuming that you're already somewhat familiar with BERT and that you came across it in a specific problem statement that you're trying to solve. Natural language inference, you got QA, you got sentiment analysis, text summarization, next sentence prediction, and so on and so forth. So I linked the paper here. You can go ahead and check that out. Very influential, developed by the Google AI team. You can think of BERT as the successor to LSTM primarily because BERT considers almost all the drawbacks of LSTM. The LSTMs are slow to train, uh, partly because it considers the words in sequential order. It doesn't take into consideration of like all the words and you can't really utilize a GPU to its maximum effectiveness. And also it's not really bidirectional. LSTMs has different gates that could execute the bidirectional LSTMs essentially, but it's truly not really bidirectional and transformers, which is the building block for uh, uh, birds, does just that. All right, so let's take a look at BERT architecture. Uh, one last thing, if you haven't checked out the transformer video I did, go ahead and check that out. I just discussed what it is. So I'm assuming that you are familiar with the transformer architecture because BERT is just the encoder blocks of the transformer architecture stacked together. So the smallest or like the base model of BERT has 12 of these encoder blocks we see right here. That's really all it's doing. And then, you know, the larger ones have more encoder blocks with more um, attention, multi-ahead attentions and more parameters. All right, so how are BERTs essentially trained? You can think of it as two different steps of the BERT architecture. Uh, we have the pre-training phase and we have the fine-tuning phase, which is over here. Uh, so let's go over the pre-training over here and within the pre-training there's two different um, I guess like methods or logics that are happening within this pre-training phase. The first one is something called the masked language model. The second one is next sentence prediction. So both of these are somewhat similar. Um, essentially the MLMs are replacing words within a sentence. So we have the sentence, let's say, make sure to like and subscribe. The BERT architecture is going ahead and masking uh, some of these words. And when it does mask it, the model then tries to predict what words would actually fit in that specific masked term. So it's like a classification, if you want to think about it, of where the model is trying to classify uh, what those masked terms are. So like, you know, it just like nulls them out and has the actual true uh, label to it. And it just keeps on iterating through that. So that's the MLM. Next sentence prediction is, you know, quite similar as well. And this is more or less probably like, you know, I'm trying to figure out the context of the sentence of what it's trying to do. Uh, but essentially, you know, you have one sentence, let's say your prior sentence, make sure to like and subscribe. You have your second sentence. I just hit the like button with notifications and subscribe button. So imagine just like masking that entire second sentence and utilizing the first sentence. What is the second sentence going to be? And that's pretty much it <laughs> for the pre-training phase. Great. So with that in mind, when we had the MLM and the NSP, both of these methods are being conducted uh, when the BERT architecture is trying to understand the language and context of your input. So if you're utilizing English, German, French, you know, whatever, BERT can distinguish despite whatever language you're using to understand the given language and its associated context. So this is like really, really nifty if you think about it. When you're utilizing the BERT architecture in industry, you're more or less probably going to be utilizing some version of a transfer learn. And typically uh, with a given corpus uh, that a BERT architecture is trained on, uh, let's say like a medical corpus or maybe lawyer jargon, so on and so forth. There are different BERT models for different specific niches within the entire industry world, I suppose. But um, yeah, you would typically utilize an already existing BERT that actually has that um, that language and that context inside of that given industry. Uh, and then you're just going to go ahead and fine tune that, uh, which is going to be the next step over here. So let's uh, do a real quick overview of the pre-training. So uh, in a more step-by-step -step process on what the pre-training is doing is that when the um, BERT is using the NSP and MLMs, every word in a sentence returns a token embedding. Okay, right here, token embedding it incorporates the segment and positional uh, embeddings to account for the ordering of inputs, which is see right here. 
uh, pass it into the BERT, and then the output word vectors for MLM and the binary value for NSPs are returned. The word vectors are then passed into a soft uh, max layer with X neurons, where those X neurons is essentially the number of possible words inside of that corpus. And then you compare the uh, cross entropy loss, thereby providing a prediction for a word in that specific distribution. So that's what's happening for the pre-training phase. Now let's go to the fine tuning phase. So the fine tuning phase will be essentially using the, the model weights for the pre-training phase of how the BERT architecture was trying to understand the language and the associated context. Uh, but then it will attach an additional fully connected network layer at the very end. And this is where you're going to be plugging in a labeled data set. So there's going to be some supervised learning going to be happening in the back end there. And then you're going to be hyper tuning that, especially that very last uh, layer, uh, hyper tuning those specific parameters to try and get that accurate prediction that uh, those really good F1 scores that you're looking for. And that's pretty much what all fine tuning is doing. So essentially you're gonna have your own label data set. You have a pre-built BERT model based on whatever context that you're using. You plug in your very niche data set into that current BERT data set and voila, you have your very own BERT data, uh, you have your very own BERT model uh, that is probably, probably really hard to replicate unless you have your exact same data. Yeah, so within the actual paper itself, there were four different like structures that you could be looking at and these are really, really highly documented. But in the example that we'll be doing is it's gonna be part D, single sentence tagging uh, or NERs uh, essentially. But like uh, this is like a really neat visual on determining, you know, like what the logic is gonna be happening in the back end for whatever type of problem that you want to try and solve. All right, so this is the code implementation of BERT. Uh, do note that a good solid chunk of my BERT implementation came from Google themselves. So this is the actual notebook that I based a lot of my logic on and utilized, copy and paste pretty much a bunch of these blocks. I'll make sure that I link it in the description and pretty much like a large difference between the original notebook and a notebook I have right here is that I just use a different data set. Uh, that's pretty much like the only difference. Uh, and of course there's some additional explanations going on and some additional codes just to make everything a little bit more seamless. Uh, but then nonetheless, uh, let's dig right in. So first thing you want to do is that you want to clone the repository and the repository looks something like this. You know, you go ahead and clone the Google research bird so that you have privy to all of these libraries and all these helper functions, so on and so forth, so that it's being utilized. And do note that within this repository, it has everything from uh, pre-training to fine tuning, and you can really, you know, go far and, you know, pretty much utilize the entire infrastructure by just utilizing a few of their scripts over here. So um, they have, you know, some executables that you can run with a variety of different parameters um, and or ordered in order to actually, you know, Pretty much like fill out that one step or fill out that other step so that's pretty much that uh, but nonetheless if you don't like to use the command line and want to like you know write everything out maybe incorporate some additional logic then this is the notebook route over here so make sure that you're on tensorflow 1.x otherwise known as maybe 1.15 or 1.14 those are very important uh, probably because this is what the architecture is based on uh, some libraries over here are, are imported. We went ahead and installed Bird TensorFlow. And make sure if you're going to notebook route that you are appending the address of your imported Bird repository so that you have access to all these different helper functions. Uh, the run classifier function, uh, which is right here, it's basically an executable to do your sentiment training. Uh, so that's what we're doing there. There's optimization, which is Adam having a tokenization uh, helper class, uh, which is trying to convert your raw text to that of a BERT oriented friendly input so that it can know what's happening, essentially. So uh, this is just some additional context on how to, you know, help yourself run the command line over here. Uh, and what I had earlier there was, it's just installing, uh, like it's a very specific uh, in this case, the uncased BERT language and just unzipping them. It has vocabulary and all that. Um, 
and you can go ahead and do that on your own time. But nonetheless, yeah, uh, this is my data set. I'm using Twitter data, uh, and this is where the interesting stuff happens. So this part is essentially, you know, it came straight from the original notebook, but create a tokenizer. Uh, utilizing some model uh, where this is the uncased base model with those 12 attention, uh, well, those 12 encoder blocks with the attention uh, mechanisms. And what this is doing here is that it's going to be creating a token or tokenizer in order for this tokenizer to convert the raw text to the BERT friendly text uh, so that it can actually read what it's doing. That's pretty much what that is doing here. Great, so with that in mind, this is a really quick example on like, you know, what's happening behind the scenes. And as you can see, uh, the very first part uh, that it's gonna be doing is that it's trying to lowercase the text, even though the text is already lowercased, uh, then it's gonna be tokenizing them. And then it'll be breaking up the words into its individual uh, segments. So it's like breaking up the words if there's like two words involved there and then it's trying to it's going to add some special characters before and after the text uh it's like cls right here and i believe it's um it's sep meaning is the marking of the end of the sentence right there and that's where the bird can read and understand like what's happening um and then it'll incorporate the indices and the segment tokens uh throughout this specific sentence so that's what's happening there and it's actually a really neat part actually for like when it's gonna be matching the indices of these specific words with the actual vocabulary uh, that's associated with the corpus of the training of the pre-trained model. And if you wanna check out that vocabulary list, you can go ahead and run this specific command. It'll unpack a basic model, the BERT model, and it'll have that vocabulary vocab list associated with that. So pretty neat. If you wanna go ahead and check that out, that is the code. Um, so yeah, this block here, uh, as funky as it looks right now, all it's really doing is that it's helping to transform the raw text into a data format that the BERT actually understands. And yep, so as we continue to go through here, this is just converting converting the train and test features into, you know, into something that BERT actually understands, and that is what this looks like. So as we can see, this is what I was mentioning on what those looks like, those special characters, uh, class, separate, class, well, basically a class label, and then uh, a marker that is the end of the sentence, and then so on and so forth. So this could be, we'll be doing this for all of the uh, records that we have in that specific data set, and it'll just keep on doing that over and over and over until it is done. So, yep, that is what that looks like, and our data looks like it's ready to be ingested or fine-tuned with the model. And then, yeah, we have uh, these two large functions. We have a create model and a model function builder. Uh, this is a helper function, funny enough, as long as it is, but we'll be seeing that right here on what is being done. So, yep, this is just gonna be training the model, and I'm not gonna go too much in detail on this because it's sort of self-explanatory if you like really dig deep on what's happening here. And then with that in mind, uh, these are gonna be the configuration steps where we want to actually put our output to, uh, and these are the various checkpoints that my model is being trained on as of right now. Um, and then, yeah, the, uh, continue on uh, specifying the output directory, output directory, number of checkpoints to save. And then this is just uh, labeling or initializing the model itself with these specific parameters over here. You can go ahead and check that out later. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we have the, uh, the train function. Uh, create an input function for training, drop the remainder of using TPUs. And then finally, we get to the training part. And this took quite a long time. Luckily, oh, it took me an hour and 48 minutes, funny enough. That is how you train the model. And then if you want to go ahead and you know uh, test out the model, let's go ahead and run this. And that took like maybe two minutes or so to evaluate the testing set. But as we can see, area under curve, 76%. Evaluation accuracy, 76, 76 for F1 score, so on and so forth. Looks pretty good. And if we go to the NLP, sentiment analysis video, the accuracy itself was around 75% and the wall time was an hour 57 minutes. So pretty much identical uh, times. However, we have somewhat of an improved 
an improved valuation going on a little bit just a little bit uh, but nonetheless if you want to do some additional predictions outside the box this was a really neat function that was provided uh, but you just provide your sentences that you want to predict so we have one positive another positive one negative and another positive sentence there's a sentiment pass that in get the predictions out and we go down here and voila these are our predictions and like and subscribe of course that's positive that was great that's also positive that was bad negative and of course well done is positive so this was actually pretty good actually in terms of the predictions um and only about an hour and 40-ish minutes yeah 40 50 minutes or so but yeah